it's Chris Chisholm. Kim is in the back there harvesting stinging nettles. That's our topic for today, day three of our social distancing. Uh, go outside, stay healthy, go outside broadcast, <clears throat> which we're going to do sometime between 5.30 and 6 um, live on Facebook and then post it to the Wolf Camp page and our Wolf Camp website. Um, mostly we're going to do stinging nettles. I guess uh, I just wanted to let you know that yesterday um, I mentioned Botany in a Day. If you didn't get a hold of a copy of that, that is the best book to learn all your plants family so you understand what all the plants are around your area anywhere in North America this works for uh, or um, and also has the best edible medicinal utilitarian uses so check that out and then in our area we have uh, plants specific Northwest Coast but get your best local field guide look for the reviews uh, for the field guide in your area so stinging nettles um, it is critical really to have uh, these on hand if possible. Now you can try to order them from Mountain Rose Herbs or some other good supplier. Sometimes they'll, um, uh, but they're in back order right now because everybody's ordering their herbs. And so you try to find a spot in your area where you can harvest stinging nettles. Um, here in the Pacific Northwest on the west side of the mountains, it's their perfect time to harvest right now. You can harvest up until about the 1st of May around here. It gets, they get too flowering at that time because after they flower, you don't want to use them regularly because it's real hard. Um, the compounds are real hard on the bladder and kidneys that develop after it flowers. So you want to harvest for drying and using on a regular basis as an herbal tea, and I'll mention why in a moment, um, before they uh, flower. Now, if you have, you can get these growing in a pot. You just transplant it. They have rhizomes that grow underneath the ground, and so you could just transplant them into a pot and have them growing in a pot and keep them trimmed, and then they won't flower. Um, but there hasn't been real studies done on, um, you know, over the summer, uh, what compounds develop even if you're cutting the flowers off as they go. Anyway, um, the reason that I love stinging nettles, they taste great, somewhere halfway between spinach and ice cream in my opinion. The reason is that those little stinging hairs are actually sting if you get, they get underneath your skin, just like lemon juice or something like that in a cut. But inside your body, they're great nutrients. Amino acids, aka protein. Uh, ascorbic acids, aka vitamin C. Um, as a matter of fact, they're 8% amino acid. and. Um, but not only that, studies have shown that they are an uh, immune system adaptogen, and I have immune, autoimmune um, issues <laughs> that cause my vitiligo, allergies, hypothyroidism, and so this kind of uh, may stabilize it. Um, in situations like we're in right now, of course, herbal medicine, you have to be really careful about it, not just go on what you hear. You have to look at the science and find out what works for you, not what may work for somebody else. As a matter of fact, I read today, somebody linked to our most popular blog post on our website is uh, our stinging nettle post that Kim wrote. And uh, somebody just linked to it today and mentioned in their article that it might be anti-inflammatory, which you have to be careful about because they're saying don't use ibuprofen, um, which uh, is at the World Health Organization. Mm -hmm. It's recommending no ibuprofen for coronavirus. Uh, this particular kind of coronavirus because they say that it may actually aggravate the situation. Um, so, and uh, now the other thing, you can use these stinging nettles fresh. You can grind them up just like you would basil to make pesto. Um, you can uh, uh, just put them, substitute um, spinach uh, in lasagna. So instead of la spinach lasagna, you can have stinging nettle lasagna. As soon as you cook them or dry them or anything, all that sting goes away. Um, again, you want to really dry them for use for tea for herbal reasons, um, medicinal reasons, but you want to use them fresh or frozen uh, for you know culinary purposes. And then the other wonderful thing is that it's about our strongest natural plant fiber. Um, as a matter of fact, you know, the big fishing nets that we used to go across the rivers before um, uh, modern nets were made out of stinging nettles. That's how strong they are. And so, uh, but that you want to harvest for in, we traditionally around here that's harvested in June, but we harvest in September to allow uh, the stinging nettles time to flower and seed and then, but we have to get them before they rot. And so that's a whole nother segment. 
All right, so I'm going to turn it over to Kim to, uh, do you want to um, show us your really amazing way of harvesting that's quick and efficient, or do you want to show them how to eat a raw plant first? You pick. Oh, um, let's do the harvesting and then okay. do the um, how to eat stinging nettle raw. So I'll bring the camera a little bit closer so you can see, identify. Not hard to identify, but it does look very much like mint. Um, as a matter of fact, there's a lot of mint family plants that are called things like you know, dead nettle. dead nettle or false nettle. But of course they don't have stings on them. All right, what do you have here? Okay, well we have two lovely young stinging nettle plants. And normally when I harvest I wear gloves, but some people feel like they don't want to do that. They just want to get stung to honor the plant. But <laughs> I don't really, I've done both. Yeah. But today we're doing it with I use one glove. On um, you can hand. use one glove, two gloves, you can use a knife, scissors. Um, but the way that I like to harvest stinging nettle um, is I tap the plant, that way if there's anything on it, any little critters living on there, if I see that something is living in the top, um, I will leave that plant alone because I don't want to disturb its home, but I don't really see anything on here, so I'm going to tap it in case there's a flying insect to knock it off. Then I decide how far or how much of the plant I want to harvest. Um, so um, because it's not particularly tall right now, I don't want to take too much of it, but I will grasp underneath the leaves, select a spot, make a cut, and I cut close to one of the pairs of leaves. Now that leaves me with a lot of stem. And because most people don't want a lot of stem in whatever they're eating, all you have to do is make a quick cut like that, and then you can put the rest of what you harvested into the bag. And that leaves the material here where it belongs so it can decompose um, and um, help neutrify the soil here. And then you just got the part that you want and then put it in the bag. Speaking of it, nettle really likes really rich soil so if mm. you do want to put them in a, in a pot because like mint and other things they spread by rhizome and so just don't let it keep growing in your garden unless you want your whole garden to become metals which would be awesome but yeah. <laughs> it's good food and that so was, that's how i like to harvest it now um and that's the that's quickest way so oh yeah this is what we have yeah. so far this has just been like a minute or two yeah. or over harvesting time. isn't too big of an issue unless everybody starts doing it in the same place you have to find a spot where um you know maybe you're the only person harvesting and it just keeps growing back from the rhizomes every year but we do like to let it seed again to help propagate further and you want to have like a, a caretaker gardener's attitude where you're not taking it where it's like competing with another plant or something like that uh, the only thing I'd like to add also, some people see us harvesting and say, oh no, you're taking out all the nettles. What are other people going to do in the future? Well, this is actually a really great way to harvest because all we're doing is we're cutting off the top terminal or apical bud. And when we do that, that tells all of these other little critters down here that it is time for them to sprout out and bush out. And so this plant, even though I've taken the top of it, will actually become more and more bushy. So it'll grow more and more leaves so people can continue to harvest this um, for quite some time. All right, well, uh, do you want to uh, take your gloves off? and Taking my gloves off. Now, there's different nutrients based on whether you eat uh, something fresh or whether you dry it um, or cook it, should I say. Uh, amino acids sometimes will break down a little bit, with, or vitamin C might break down with to cooking, so you might want to eat it fresh. Um, and this is just something fun to do. <laughs> um, there's also, like, if you buy some farmer's markets, uh, people grow it commercially where it doesn't have as many stingers on it, and so it's a lot easier to eat fresh at that time. Okay, well, if you don't already know, the secret to the stinging nettle is this. All of the hairs that are on this plant um, are hollow, and that's how they get the acid under your skin. And we don't want to poke ourselves and get that acid. So what you do is you take a look at the leaf that you want to harvest, and you can see that it's kind of a heart shape. You've got a cleft at the top, and you've got a point at the bottom. So just remember, all of those stinging hairs on this leaf, both upper and lower surface, don't stick straight up in the air. They actually angle down the leaf. Um, from the cleft down to the point. So if you rub it this way, you're not gonna get stung. If you rub it the other way, you will likely get stung. So if you wanna harvest a leaf for fresh eating, all you do is you hover your fingers above and below the place that you wanna harvest and pinch. So all I'm doing is I'm pressing those hairs flat against the leaf. Um, and then if you wanna, if you don't like where you grabbed it, just release and press and watch press. Out for those yeah, and you gotta watch underneath. out for the ones underneath the ones above. Because <laughs> when you press it and you start to pull that off, they like to sting you on other parts of your hand. In so, fact, you could use your other hand, gloved hand maybe. This you could, but eh, don't wanna do that. So anyway, I'm wow, gonna harvest this first leaf. Know, Isn't that wonderful? <laughs> so anyway, pinch and pull. So now, anytime I just press it, I'm not gonna get stung because I'm just pressing those hairs flat on the leaf. So here's my heart shape. So what I do is I pinch it at the top, run my fingers down the leaf, 
in order to break the tips off of those hairs. Once those tips are broken, they can't sting you. So once I feel like I've done that enough, I like to fold it in half boop, this way, not this way, or else you've got hairs going in opposite directions and you can get stung. So fold it in half of this direction and rub the outside once more. Once you think that you've done it enough, take a deep breath and roll it into a ball. And so you smash it up just a little bit until it starts to get just a little bit juicy. I don't know if you can see that. Yeah, closer. Closer, closer. <laughs> I don't okay. know if that's going to focus. Anyway, so it gets a little bit juicy in your fingers. And then your last line of defense are your molars. So, stick it in, chew it up, and then down the hatch. And then you have chew just it up eaten. really yeah. well because well, those yeah. hairs are so bad. And I promise you, if you do it this way, you will not get stung in the mouth. I've eaten so many of these. I've never been stung in the mouth. Just do that. But sometimes on your first time or for second time harvesting, you'll get stung on the finger. And you know what? It's not the end of the world. Yeah. There's a it's lot okay. of things that so-called cure it. Everybody has their favorite. Yeah. By the way, I, I'm not doing this because <laughs> those hairs that kind of aggravate the throat before singing. Yes, yeah. that's right. Because remember, uh, those hairs are still on there when you swallow it, so <clears throat> something to keep in mind. Good enough for nettles right now? Yep. Tomorrow we're going to do a plant walk just up our favorite trail, Ooh. find a hidden artesian spring yes. so that people don't have to uh, hoard all the water in plastic bottles. They can, uh, of course, uh, artesian springs hard to find. There happens to be three in western Washington that are big like this one. And then... Um, it's right near our house, and and some other. We'll look at some other really great medicinal plants on that little thirty-foot segment that we're going to walk. Also, our favorite stinging nettle area just had a big, huge Douglas fir uh, drop onto it during the last storm, I guess. However, I'm very excited about this because you see those uh, Douglas fir needles. Those branches are the best thing for a bed to make a bed to keep you warm underneath because those. Um, um, I'll show you. The, uh, I'm really excited about this in case we need to bug out and make a um, shelter out here someday. Um, those uh, those uh, needles go all the way around the uh, stem and so it creates a lot of loft. Good for underneath you. Um, and they're also really great smelling. When I've lived primitively out um, in an earth lodge for a while, I change those out every week. And that was the favorite, not my favorite thing to do. Well, anyways, we'll save all the other plant stuff for tomorrow. I'm going to finish up with the song. This song uh, I selected because, again, it's one of my favorite artists I'm trying to showcase, although showcasing is not exactly uh, probably the appropriate word since I don't do them justice, the original great musician. Um, but uh, it is partially reflective my mood today I wasn't quite as you know it's hard to stay in a good mood during this time and so as a matter of fact I'm not sure how productive I would be uh, if I didn't commit to this daily broadcast uh, I don't think I changed out of my yoga pants until about 15 minutes before we left to come up here <laughs> uh, however of course because of looking at all the news and all the science and everything that's happening um, notice right here there's a trillium coming up. Um, it's beautiful, just starting to um, come out right there. And so this song uh, is mentions the forest flowers. It's by Ken Lonquist, L-O-N-N-Q-U-I-S-T, from Madison, Wisconsin. Loved him. He was my favorite artist in college. I've learned all tons of his songs. I'd sing his songs at protests and all sorts of stuff. Um, but this song is one that I sing all the time at camp. Um, and I ch he originally wrote it called o Ontario, I think, and then changed the name to Wisconsin. And I changed the name to Tahoma, which is the name of the great mountain volcano that is above us in our area here. And so it goes like this. So go to KenLonquistProbably.com, I think his website is. And follow him on Facebook, Ken Lonquist. Amazing stuff to listen to.